to Oz by Drone. I'm Greg and he's not John. Hello, Lloyd, and welcome. Thank you for filling in for, for John today. That's absolutely awesome. You're not at the bottom of the barrel. Come on. Are you saying you're like Vegemite? Oh, I'm, I'm looking at you and I'm not hearing your audio. Can you just keep talking again? Um, um, the mute button on that channel bottom. There we go. Let's start that again. Hi, I'm Greg. And I'm Lloyd Mendenhall, the grumpy vlogger. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about Take that, guys. Two. The wonderful, <laughs> the wonderful joys of audio. So um, you, you were saying take two. Yeah, take two. What I was saying was, you know, I appreciate you having me on here and I understand everybody else was busy. And when you guys down and were making some Vegemite, you had to scrape the bottom of the barrel to get the stuff to make it. And I was underneath that. So scraping the bottom of the barrel, we asked for some jokes last week to pick who it was and no one sent anything in. So therefore, we've got you. Oh, exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, look, thanks for being with us today. So thank you for joining and welcome to Oz by Drone. Someone is saying on the screen, Skydance, no video and delayed audio on Lloyd. No, cutting in and out. Good now. By the way, a quick um, comment on that. We're doing a bit of an experiment and we're doing 24 frames per second instead of 30. The reason for doing that is that it uses 30% less bandwidth, um, roughly. So hopefully that's going to make our stream not drop out. But do give some feedback during the course of the show of how it's working and Hopefully it's not going to be too bad. Anyway, moving right along, let's get on with the show. All right. Okay, we're ready for the news. Absolutely. So as normal, thank you very much to Jeff Sills. He does some awesome work putting this together. If um, people want to have a look at the, the news, you can either go to the Dronebook website, and in fact, you can contribute news. You can actually put news stories into the links section inside Dronebook. And it'll automatically make its way here for review to see if it's appropriate to put it on for the show. And um, that would be really awesome. Anyway, our first story of the day is... Uh, it's, it's called Mind Staggering. Dozens of drones performing a light show crash Earth above screaming spectators. Let's have a look at the video. So as you can see there, we've got some drones and unfortunately the drones come to Earth. Now, the story is not so much about, you know, the fact that a couple of drones malfunction, but it was actually a large quantity of drones malfunctioning simultaneously. Now, what's even more interesting is that this is not the first time that this happened. About six months ago, also in China, there was a drone show of this nature and multiple drones crashed to Earth. Now... <clears throat> I'm taking a guess there, but it's someone doing some bad stuff, right? So if we're going to affect a large number of drones simultaneously, either there's some bad software that caused the problem, possible, but for this to happen on a few occasions, um, they're actually claiming that there was RF interference or jamming, and that was claimed at the first event as well. Yeah, there's a good possibility of that because, uh, I mean, that, that technology is out there now. They're using it to bring drones down all the time. Which, which, you know, leads on to the question, who can decide when it's appropriate to bring down a drone? What are the appropriate criteria? Who's allowed to do it? Under what circumstances? And how do we protect for the safety of people that are nearby? As you saw, there was a near miss where one of those drones actually nearly hit the photographer who was taking that scene. So pretty scary kind of topic. Absolutely. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think I saw that there were at least a couple people uh, got scraped up pretty good from that. Yeah. So we move on to there and then we go on to Game of Thrones. And we did have a look at this story recently, but there's just more confirmation that Game of Thrones crew have shot down drones to prevent final season spoilers. And this leads on from what we were just talking about. Who is the, the right person to say, yes, you can shoot down a drone? Now, not physically shooting them down, but 
using mm -hmm. RF jammers, it's it, it's going to lead to unpredictable things. Yeah, and in this case, they had to ask for a no-fly zone and had one. So under those circumstances, uh, they might have been in the right, but whether that was the proper way of doing it, I don't know. I think it's going to have to be decided somewhere along the line. Look, at the end of the day, a drone, from a regulatory perspective, is just another aircraft. Exactly. Right? So if, you, if it's illegal to shoot down a 747, it's probably illegal to shoot down a drone. And sure, the military in their capacity to protect a country have the authority to shoot down aircraft under rules of engagement. But the producers of Game of Thrones, they did not have the right to do that. If that drone fell down and hit someone on the head, there's big liability. And certainly under Australian law, the penalty is identical if you shot down a 747 or if you shot down a drone. And I believe it's the same in the US as well. Yeah, it is a felony here. The problem we're having, and of course, that was brought up on Ken's show, is finding out who's in charge of enforcing it. Yeah, people just don't know. It's too confusing for the poor little um, constable plod. Anyway, yeah. moving on from that, we've got another crash-related thing. Last week, we had someone from um, the Never Mind Your Own channel, and um, he had a crash. I've got a, an update on that. Let's just play that clip. Hi guys, by now it is clear that there are wires at that location. If you look up, you have to really look well and that's one of the reasons why I hadn't seen it. But you can see three electricity cables running right here. And the most logical thing is that I hit the wires over there. The wire was here, it was going up and then Bam, it hit and the drone went doing this. Went up and then turned, turned more and was going down. Here is a video of a guy explaining a secret way to turn off your drone. And it turns it. So interesting story there. Um, I'm just getting my phantom out at the moment um, deliberately. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a bit of an experiment here. I've got it um, with no props on. I'm going to power it up, get my controller out, arm the props, and we're going to actually see if we can replicate that. Um, so Peter didn't do a test with a phantom, which is fine, but um, let's see if we can do that. Just bear with me for a moment. Wait for the drone to power up. Okay. Okay, so the drone's powered up. You can hear it doing its magic over there. We're going to tip it over. And the drone just crashed. So the moral of the story is, if you're flying with a DJI drone, I'll just turn that off. If you're flying with a DJI drone and you hit something that's going to cause it to go like that you've got no way to recover it's going to turn the motors off and it's going to crash down so be very very careful when you're doing vertical ascent with a dji drone exactly yeah isn't that one of the feature safety features though is that if it should fall over its side it'll shut off though isn't that uh, it? If it's on the ground and the altitude is zero absolutely that's a good idea <laughs> but not when you're 100 feet in the air Obviously, <laughs> they've got to work the altitude situation out. <clears throat> yeah. So I encourage everyone here to um, to go have a look at the links in the description for the video. Go to the Never Mind Your Own channel and say hi to him and, you know, let him know that you're, um, you are supporting him. DJ, I said, we're not paying for the repair. So he's got to pay for it out of his own pocket because he did hit some wires. It was his fault. But having said that, I don't think he's the only one to blame. The cutoff feature shouldn't happen um, when you're in the air. Anyway, let's move on from that. The next story of the day is... Uh, the challenge is associated with identifying people from drones. Drone below. Yeah, so drones, just like calculators, eventually Drone Below are saying uh, in their article 
um, that computers will eventually surpass people's ability to be able to identify people. So if we're having a look here at the photo on the screen, this is just a photo of something seen from a drone and in the next shot, just a little bit of a different view of that. You know, drones obviously taking photos of people. The question is, how do you actually identify who's in the shot? And in the third one, which will actually send full screen, um, there's two people that you can see over there. And the, the, the automated software has identified the wrong person in one of those shots. And it's very, very difficult challenge to try and identify people. At the moment, humans are doing better. Um, but certainly there's a research paper. And if you have a look at the um, links in the description, um, go to the Drone Below website and you can have a look at that article in more detail. But there's research happening right now on how to use that information and use that facial recognition and people recognition um, for law enforcement and other purposes. And next on our list today, we've got virtual reality flight planning. What's all this about? Uh, this is a, uh, it's an argument, uh, it's called uh, Vermeer Beta iPhone app. It lets you augment reality to map out your drone flight. Uh, it uh, augments the, it, it sets up a map so you can uh, basically fly the cameras, it says. And okay. uh, I've actually played with it today. It's a pretty slick little thing. Yeah. So from what I understand, it goes and grabs some some data from Google and other sources and builds a 3D model of where it is that you're planning to fly. You do your flight plan using your phone and you actually kind of steer with it and plot out where it is that you're going to fly. And you can do that in practice mode before you go and send that as a pre-programmed mission. We got a video on that. Let's have a look. First, type in where you want to fly your drone. We're going to go with Rabbit Island in Hawaii. Choose your exact flying location by moving the white box, and choose your takeoff spot by moving the yellow circle. Move your phone slowly from side to side to scan your environment. This is to make sure the augmented reality object sticks to a point in 3D space. Then boom! Hawaii in a 3D augmented reality environment. Unlike other apps, you have to move. Move your body to move your phone through the environment. This is what creates the flight plan for your drone. Everything you see on your screen will be what the drone camera sees. Physically push the phone forward to move the drone camera forward. Pull it back to pull back the drone camera. Move it to the right to move the camera to the right. Move it to the left to move the camera to the left. Tilt your phone to tilt the drone camera. Once you've got the hang of it, hit record to start designing your path. Once you're finished, you can pre-visualize the shot. But note that the speed will be faster than it'll be in real life, since we've scaled down the environment to just 5 feet by 5 feet in AR. The drone will speed up and slow down at the same relative speed to your design. Once you're happy with the shot, send it to the drone to execute. Now you're ready to fly. If you run into any problems, just send us a note. We're more than happy to help. So this sounds really, really cool. Um, if anyone is um, a DJI pilot in particular, go and uh, grab a copy of that software and um, have a play with it. Yeah, it's it's actually, it is fun. to. I tr tried it out. Of course, I have a uh, Mavic Air, which is other side. Uh, anyways, and so I haven't tried it with that yet, but uh, yeah, it looks like it would be a really interesting. Yeah, look at a different way of flying. So map it. Look, from a safety perspective, I think it's really good for people who are not necessarily an A1 pilot to be able to go and plot what it is you want to do and then go <laughs> and, and launch it. So really cool idea. Yeah, I kind of like the idea. That's When I saw that story, I thought, yeah, I want to try that out. Yeah. Okay, moving right along. Next one we've got is about a paraglider um, and a drone. Now, we had a story a little while ago, a paraglider and the drone, where it didn't end happily. But this one, thankfully, ended a little bit nicer. Let's have a look at that. Now, in this story, um, it's more of a photography uh, fun flight. Paragliders going and doing his this flight as well. Very, very beautiful um, set of photography to have a look at as well. 
again, encourage people to go to the links in the description and have a look at it in more detail. The particular um, channel this come from was Air Blaster. Really nice story. <coughs> yeah. Um, being one type of pilot versus another, a fr our friend Ken always does talking about writing this gig there's this gigantic but it's like twice the height of every other cow in the field and it's just absolutely gigantic and I would say would you ride it Lloyd but you haven't seen it so we can't go there Um, and I, I actually rode bulls. <laughs> it, yeah, I, I, did, I, I did semi pro rodeo back when I was really young, and now I'm paying for it as I'm old. Yeah, <laughs> Ken and I were talking about this video, and um, he um, he said um, they wouldn't have a saddle big enough, and I replied back to him, "Yeah, because um, your, your backside is too big for the saddle." <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving right along. <laughs> Our next story of the day is about the Great Barrier Reef. Um, so this is a story where uh, Drone Deploy has taken to Australian skies to help save the Great Barrier Reef. So they're using drones and photography and they're doing all of the um, orthomorphic photography to go and stitch it all together and have a look at any abnormalities and problems and using that to help provide input that's going to help save the Great Barrier Reef, one of the great parts of Australia. It's all good. But a really, really cool kind of story, right? So they're going to use that data, like I said, stitching together one big complete picture. So they've got a single story of truth of the reef and they can see problems and changes in the reef um, from the air. So really cool. We got a couple more and the next one is actually, everyone's heard about ISO standards or I hope a lot of IT people would have heard about it. So um I'm a little bit concerned about this, right? So the ISO organization have decided that they think it's a good idea to build standards for drones. So um, the rise of drones and potential safety issues has called for a global wide new review of operational standards. Now, last time I checked, we've got ICAO, which is the international aviation body, which then talks to the FAA, which goes and then builds local regulations. And I'm concerned that if we're going and having ICAO in charge of this, and then you've got this other body over here on the side, you know, which one is right and having a single point of truth. We had the same problem with the FAA, um, you know, saying we, we, we run the, the skies in the US and then other local councils were saying, no, we do. And then the states were saying, no, we do. And Thankfully, there's been, you know, a clarification made on that, that the FAA is the only authoritative body in the US, which is good. But I think, you know, having these standards bodies doing this in parallel to ICAO is going to lead to some problems. Well, I mean, just a, the, a simple example has nothing to do with drones, but it does have to do with uh, something that the Australians and the Americans have a problem with, and that's whether it's aluminium or aluminum. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't say that right. I know I, I I tripped over that one, but just so people know, I do I do read. They are both correct. They are both scientifically correct names. Yeah, um, but how do you how do you um, what is it you use when you're heating up that metal when you're doing work electrical work? You know, a something iron. I'm just trying to get you to say it. Oh, Are come you, on, Lloyd. No, you got me now. The, you the, melt the you, hot metal and you melt it and you're doing electrical electronic work? What's oh, the thing? A, so a soldering iron, yes. There's no, <laughs> I know. It's not a soldering iron. I don't care it's how It's got you an L in the word. It's got an L in the word. You can't make it any simpler than that. 
And there's no R in Washington either, but I still say it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Moving right along. And I'm going to give it a bigger title than the rest of them just because I think it deserves it. So spin up. We've got a live cross. Well, no, not a live cross. A pre-recorded cross um, from Ken. So Ken um, and myself and Jeff Sills, we recorded some video prior to the event. And uh, let's have a look at that. Thanks, Live Ken. Hey, everybody at Spin Up. Look, it's Jeff Sills and Greg Kunert, my two uh, friends and producers, without whom this would not be possible at all. Let's start. Oh, sh oh shucks. <laughs> Let's start with Greg. Greg, what was it like in the early days of Wirecast for me and you? Um. I can, I can say, say that, that I've seen, seen your, your complexion, complexion go significantly, significantly red. red. Sorry about that. I was um, getting over to the screen to go and fix something else. And um, then I forgot about the fact that I asked my producer to pause it right there. So I want to explain what happened there. You notice some echo in my voice as soon as um, Ken went full screen. And this is something that happens in his show week after week after week. It's a common mistake, and unfortunately, it's due to some weird things in Wirecast, but we try and work around these things, and building checklists is the only way to fix it. But anyway, let's continue with the video. Just as soon as we press the button, he's paused. I can say that your, your hair, hair that you've got, got none replaced, replaced on, on my That spin up. Come on now. Now... Now, Jeff, uh, you do the news, as people know, and uh, you help me with computer problems. So you get some of the red face that uh, Greg <laughs> gets, and very often we will uh, Skype together and work out problems. What have been some of the larger hurdles as far as Wirecast goes? And I'll just show very quickly the Wirecast uh, screen that I use. This is what the interface looks like. And uh, Jeff, would you say that Wirecast is more friendly for Mac users or PC users? I would probably say it's it's friendly for both. Um, the Macintosh users, uh, you, you know, know Greg, Greg uses, uses it on the Macintosh. Macintosh doesn't, doesn't seem to have, have too many issues. issues. On the, the Windows, Windows side, we've had lockups and, and some, some freezing, freezing, but that, that turned out to be a lot of versioning issue. issue. Um, um, your hardware, hardware always, always seemed to be something, something that we, we could, could work through and, and fix, no problem. problem. Yeah, and I appreciate that another man is concerned with my hardware. <laughs> oh, I'll be over here. Bye now. Hey, 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 all right, it's all you guys, all you. Yeah, okay, I, so let's take over the show. No, don't yeah. do that, no, don't do that. So uh, is there any advice that you would give people out there before I hand it back to live and in person, Ken. Um, Greg, final words on Wirecast. Is Wirecast the end all be all for a live platform? Because I did start out with OBS and tried a few others, but they were mostly for gamers and didn't have the, the power that I required for the way I'm doing it. Yeah, I've looked at multiple um, um, software, software products, products and, and certainly, certainly for, for a Mac, Mac user, user, which is, which is my case, case Wirecast, Wirecast is all, is all that there is, is unless, unless you use OBS. OBS. There, there are, are other, other options, options for Windows, Windows users, users, but grass, grass is always, always greener green on the other, on the other side. side. I've, I've seen, seen other people, people pulling their hair out, out with, with other, other platforms, platforms as well. As well. Mm. But, the, but one the one piece of advice I've got is learn from being a drone pilot. If you've got a checklist, and most good drone pilots do, I've got a checklist, a pre-show checklist that I go through each and every week when I'm using Wirecast, and if you do it in the right order, it reduces problems. Is there anything, Greg, that you would like to say to the spin-up audience before I turn it over to Jeff for his interpretive dance? Um, just, just one, one other, other thing. thing. Doing, Doing all, all of this, this is challenging, challenging and, and but, but at the, at end, the end, end of the day, day if, you if you want to get, get into, into streaming, streaming do, it do it because, because you want to have, have fun, fun doing, doing it. it. If, if you, you can't, can't get, get past, past the technology, technology might not be the right thing for you. Or if you haven't got another Greg, to help you to do it on show. Yeah, yeah, you but, can't have this one. This one's mine. This one's mine. You can't have him. He's mine. But just keep this in mind. If you want to go and uh, do streaming to make money out of it, 
you've got the wrong motivation. You've got to start having a lot of fun. And I think we do that every time we do what we're doing on our channels. And that's absolutely true with whatever you do. If you do something you love to do with passion, then uh, others will see the passion you have for it and will enjoy it along with you. Absolutely. Jeff, is there anything you would like to say to everyone before I let you juggle the flaming chainsaws? Okay, okay well, well, flaming, flaming chainsaws. chainsaws. Um, um, always, always check, check, out, check out, out the news feed, feed the, 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 the drone, drone wiki, wiki site. site. Uh, the, uh, news the news is, is always, always updated, updated there, there as often as I can. can. And, and with Dronebook, Dronebook the, the news that I generate goes through Dronebook, Dronebook as well. As well. Um, and, and aside, aside from, from that, that, just have a blast, blast guy. guy. Yeah, and I would say definitely, if I didn't already say it on stage, that uh, doing a live show is a community effort. Uh, you can't do it well by yourself. You have to have other people helping you, like these fine gentlemen. Give me, give me a, give me the, the high five. Give me a high five. One, oh, come okay, on, have a hug. The, the, oh yeah, bring it in. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Back to you live and in person, Ken. So there we go. That was a little bit of spin up um, that Ken and I pre-recorded with Jeff. And unfortunately, I saw Lloyd. You were looking down and not looking at the screen at the exact moment where Ken jumped off the Sydney Harbour Bridge. <laughs> anyway. You I saw that. I saw it walking across and I thought, what am I seeing? And I was trying, yeah, okay. Anyway, <laughs> look, this, this was a lot of fun. And um, just to share with people, right, doing, um, doing a live show has a lot of complicating factors. Right now, I've got another couple of people, Teresa and Tor, our guests that we're going to talk to in a couple of moments. And they're sitting, waiting, ready to come on the screen. And before we even get them on the screen, we've got all these audio things that we need to do to try and prevent the echo that we accidentally had. Um, and earlier today, we had Lloyd. And right now, we've got something weird happening with Lloyd where I can see his voice in two places. So when he talks, he might be loud. I'm not sure. Um, can you talk a bit for me, Lloyd? Yeah. What would you like me to talk about? You know how it is. I start talking and nobody can shut me up. That's yeah. why I'm a vlogger. <laughs> Down there, can you can you mute the second Lloyd? There we go. I don't know if that's the one or not, but my wife, we've got my some. My wife's been trying to mute me forever. <laughs> that's why I like a GPS instead of a wife because it's got a mute button. Boom, <laughs> tish. <laughs> it tells. It still tells you where to go. So, <laughs> yeah, to say the least. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, moving right along. So that's all of the news for today. And without further ado, let's um, bring in our guest for today, Teresa and Tor. Hello. Hi. And there we go. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Tor. Ooh. Welcome to Oz by Drone. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you for having us. Okay. So tell, tell us about what, what it is you do on YouTube. You've got a YouTube channel. How did it all start? Um, we decided to quit our jobs and travel the world. And with us, we brought camera equipment because we love the film. So we're flying drones and shooting stuff, everyday scenarios that we see. So in the beginning, we call it for daily vlogs, but now we just call it for daily uploads. So we upload movies daily. And there's a lot of drone footage there because I personally love to fly the drone. So what happened first, the, the YouTubing or the traveling? Which happened first? They happen at the exact same time. Okay, so you hadn't done any YouTubing. You then just packed up yourselves and said, we're going to go around the world and we're starting a YouTube channel. Yeah, basically. Okay, yeah. V very, very brave and adventurous. And um, certainly I've seen some of your footage and it looks absolutely awesome. We've had a couple of your um, clips in the um, Explore Australia segment before. Let's put one of them up right now and get you to talk tell us a little bit about this one. Yeah, sure. Yeah, this is the Surfing Cowboys. Um, this is actually shot um, on a quad. This is this is like part drone shots and part camera shots. Um, and yeah, it's... yeah. In some of the clips, it's me writing. Yeah. But when it comes to her. You better keep it safe. Uh, we're about 30 Don't minutes away from Byron Bay in a small city called Bolina. 
feel. So this is one of our staff. We work at a, a horse farm here. Okay. Um, yeah, we basically train horses every day on the beach. Okay. Paradise. <laughs> no, it looks beautiful. So this is close to where you're living at the moment. Yeah, this is where we're living. Okay, we're Talk like three minutes off the beach. Okay. And where else have you been around Australia so far? Well, we started off in Melbourne and we've been, uh, well, southwest Victoria and we, we started off there and then we drove through Sydney and... Well, made our yeah. way up here. Okay. It's beautiful footage. Yeah, and, and most of this is shot by the drone. Just some of the beginning footage was shot by a camera. Yeah. So um, we're really proud of this edit. It took a lot of editing with the sound and everything. And obviously we have to shoot with the drone a lot of times because horses are living animals and well, try... You, do. you never know how they're going to react no. when you fly close up with the drone. But... Yeah. And you never know how fast they're going to go. So you're always going to try to adjust to get that smooth cinematic footage. It's, it's, uh, and I often have to fly with a DJI product. We, we fly with the Mavic Air and we often have to fly in sports mode and everybody who tried sports mode know that the drone becomes quite jerky then yeah. so i have to learn to be cinematic in sports mode which has been a fun learning curve <laughs> okay so you're, you're flying a mavic air is that your only dji drone at the moment it's our only dji drone at the moment because okay. we're traveling it's so small it's easy to pack okay and it looked absolutely gorgeous footage and i, I i've not heard of someone else doing dji um, cinematography and sports mode before, so well done on getting your um, your skills up there. Thanks. Yeah, I won't even I won't even fly mine out of uh, out of the safe mode. I'm just you know, there's no way I do sports mode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm I'm very impressed. I tell you that that's yeah. some beautiful footage. Oh, thank you. So sure. so right. where where is next for you? Where do you plan to go next? Oh, got some lag here for a moment. What'd you say? Where do you plan to go in Australia next? What's the next part of your journey? We're actually traveling down south again when we're done here over Christmas because there's some big fires up north and my brother is coming to Australia. So we want to go to Tasmania in February next year. So we're mm -hmm. just going to stay here for a month and then we're going to travel down south for a month and a half and then we're heading to Tasmania. Okay. Tasmania is absolutely beautiful um, place to go. I know I've... I've, I've been there once and I, are you driving or are you flying to Tasmania? Yeah, we're, we're driving. You're driving, so you're doing, and you're doing the ferry? Yeah, we have a rooftop tank. Yeah. Our ferry, yeah, with the car, so we yeah, can drive by ourselves. Absolutely beautiful. And um, taking at least a week, if not two weeks, to do one circumnavigation of Tasmania to start with and yeah. then find the places that you want to go back to, it's beautiful. I'm certainly right, looking forward for to um, having a look at some of your footage from Tassie. And um, we've got a regular um, person that we get some footage from, Ferg Taz. We'll have to see if we can hook you up with him to, um, to do a joint um, drone special, if you like, to have a look at at some point. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Look, it's wonderful. And Therese, let me ask, are you, are you the pilot as well or, or is, are you leaving the piloting up to um, the better half? Whoops. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> no, I fly sometimes myself, but I'm not near as good as Thor is. Okay. Well, we have this symmetry where, whereas when I'm done with the shots, if I need to go to the main camera, I can just give her the controller and she knows how to film and some some calm cinematic just over shots and she can land it and yeah everything else so she's really nice to have for those uh, moments but i don't have time to do all the last preparations uh, during the filming of landing and everything so i can just jump straight to the main camera and get those shots we need so it's a joint force cooperation thing here yeah who does the editing Ah, uh, that's me. Okay. And did you, um, had you done much editing work before you started your channel? Uh, yeah, actually, I've done media school back in the days, but I was 10 years off video creating. So it was a rough learning curve sitting in Madagascar, our first stop with Final Cut and trying to learn to edit the movie again. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Look, it was absolutely wonderful having you as our guest today. Thank you. And um, stick around. We're going to do something a little bit fun. Um, 
at this point, we'll press that button over there on row three. <laughs> that one, yep. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to play Stop the Yank. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's that fun time that we have whenever we have a Yank on, and today we've got Lloyd. This ought to be fine. Oh, it wasn't meant to disappear that quickly. Our producer pressed the wrong button. Never mind. It's all good. So what I'm after here today, we're not actually going to play Stump the Yank just yet. We're actually asking for some viewer participation. So Lloyd actually knows some people in Australia and he talks to them fairly regularly. And therefore, he has, you know, he's got an idea of some Aussie term. So the, the, the challenge is... We got to pick something that he doesn't know. So the challenge is open to everyone in the channel today. List your favorite Aussie slang word, and our producer is going to pick one at random. And at the end of FPV Corner, which is our next segment, we're going to put that one word up or phrase, and we're going to see if um, Lloyd knows what it is. And if he doesn't know, we're going to go to Teresa and Tor and see if they know. They're not Yanks, but we can still have some fun with them anyway and see if they've um, picked up some Aussie phrases along the way. <laughs> so that's what's coming up. But until we get to there, it's FPV Corner, and this is a segment where uh, Greg Hilton, who helps us with the show, he puts together a lot of our um, video content. Greg's gone and picked out a cool FPV video of the week, so we're going to put that on the screen right now. <laughs> So this video is um, created by Oni Giri, who we had as our guest recently. Um, and by the way, Lloyd, no cheating. You're not allowed to Google the things that people are putting in the chat, okay? <laughs> I wouldn't anyways, because I'm too slow on the keyboard. I'm, I'm used to doing everything on an iPad. And yeah. I'm using a big computer now. And my finger, well, my spelling errors, you can see all over the chat, so. <laughs> yeah. So this um, this video here by Oni Giri, um, she created this. It's actually at the same location that we had from the previous week. Um, just picking my notes up off the floor. Um, she said about this particular, I think this has become a place that I want to learn by heart. My quad had a dying ESC on the day, but it's fixed now. Still, it was a great time to be out flying. Summer is here. We've got some good ones coming in there. I spike, thank you for that. We'll see what else comes in. I'll have a look at a few more. And just to be clear, um, it's an incorrect spelling there, Mr. Spike, but we'll sort that out in a couple of minutes. So as I was saying though, this is the same location that we had from last week's FPV corner. And um, Last week was shot through the trees, definitely at a lower level, going through and navigating the pathways. But this is certainly a more aerobatic, cinematic approach from um, Onigiri. Some beautiful footage. That kind of stuff just impresses me every time I see it. Uh, I'm, I'm honestly thinking about asking Santa to get me an FPV drone. So <laughs> to play with. Don't get the drone. There's actually, if you have a look... Um, there's um, uh, Mr. Steele. If you have a look at his channel, he's actually put a new video up about how to start getting into FPV in a, in a kind of a recipe fashion. He's saying, do this first and so on and so on and follow the recipe. And um, his first comment is about getting the controller and getting a sim because if you can fly with your controller on the sim and not crash... That makes sense. Maybe uh, I guess I'm going to have everyone please do check out onigiri's playing with it at the moment and yeah it's it's challenging it's a different way of flying but i'm enjoying it yeah <clears throat> um, this is see this is what my oldest son needs because he, he he likes to go fast and do stuff like this and unfortunately he tries to do it with his spark or the more expensive drones uh, i say more expensive that uh, he tries to you know do like uh 
Tor does here, and he wants to do cinematic shots in in uh, 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 sports modes. <laughs> yeah. So we might. Yeah. I might just fade that out and we'll move on for today. We'll leave that there. There's a lot more footage um, from that clip. I do encourage you to go to um, Onigiri's channel and uh, check that out. So next on the list, we've got, let's play the intro again. One more time, Stump the Yank intro. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to play Stump the Yank. Okay, and it's time to play Stump the Yank, and let's have a look at what's coming in on the screen at the moment. Now, I'm looking at the... Spike, you've asked what does a Sanger mean. We're not going to use that one. That one's nah. You know the answer to that, don't you, Lloydie? A what? A Sanger. A sa no, I don't. You don't know what a Sanger is? No. <laughs> Okay, that's not the one we're going to pick, but what do you know what it is, Tor? Oh, I don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> and he's sitting over there laughing at me, yeah. <laughs> okay, a Sanger is a sandwich. But what, ah. is, a, what is a banger Sanger? <laughs> a very good sandwich. Lloyd? For some reason I'm thinking bacon sandwich, but that ain't right. No, nah, it's a sausage sandwich. Well, okay, it was pork. I was close. Okay, <laughs> okay what else have we got? The one, that, the one that my daughter picked, let's have a look. What is the question that she's got on the screen? She'll put up in just a moment. I'm looking. Hang on. I need to be able to see it as well. That's the challenge. Waiting, waiting. These are just few minutes that you need. <laughs> yeah, oh, here we go. This is the one that was um, misspelt before, and it's meant to be um, spelt, what is Sparrow's Fart? Sparrow's Fart. Yeah. Lloyd? Ah. Uh... Have we stumped the yank? You give up? Yeah, you are, yeah, because I, I have a couple of thoughts that I what I would say it is, but uh, I'm not sure that's what it is. You know, one of them little quiet, quiet. Uh, uh, no. Oh, oh, early morning, early morning. How did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while. I haven't talked to these guys on a regular basis for a while. I had to stop and think about it. So. Early morning. You are absolutely correct. Did you know that one, Tor? Yeah, yeah. I actually knew it. I, I frequently use that one because it's so fun to say. Okay. Is there one more? Let me quickly go back to the chat. I'm disappointed now that you got that one. <laughs> Let me have a look. View. Preview. Trouble and strife. Trouble and strife. That's my... <laughs> Why do you think I'm called the grumpy vlogger? Because I live trouble and strife. <laughs> okay. Any thoughts? Yeah, it means you're having a bad day, all the problems and trouble and strife. Yeah, isn't that yeah, what but it that's, means? Yeah, that's boring. Oh, okay. No, I have no thoughts. No thoughts? What about you, um, what about you um, Tor? I... Uh, in Aussie meaning, that probably means that I was in trouble. I'm perfectly fine. Uh, That's my guess. Well, I hate to say it. Uh, yeah. It actually means your wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Trouble and strife. Yeah. 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 Soon anyway. As, yeah. Strife and wife. Yeah. 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 Anyway, look, that's all for the <laughs> that little bit of fun today. We're going to move on to competitions at this point in time and let me go and get that back on the screen because I've been moving around to do those few other things <clears throat> okay
Okay, so we've got a giveaway planned um, just before Christmas. We're going to give this away on the last show before Christmas. We're giving away two prizes, one of which is the Stork Box. Now, this is a box that you can strap on to your Phantom 4 Pro and connect it up, and it's going to release whatever it is that's in it. So it's going to drop and open that box up and drop the contents down below. Now, I'm going to do a review of this little beastie in the near future. I had planned on doing it together with John, but um, as you can see, John's not here, to, uh, here today. He's on holidays for the next couple of weeks, and um, I don't know that I'll get to do it with him. I'll do a bit of fun with it myself in the near future. And there's another prize that we're also giving away, which is a um, HTML cloner box. So this is something that I originally saw on the channel that we talked about earlier today, Never Mind Your Own, the guy who crashed the drone, Peter. Um, it's a box that'll take a HDMI input and save all of the output of that onto a, um, a USB stick or a hard drive or whatever. Really cool device. I've got that downstairs as well. We're giving away both of those before Christmas on the last show before Christmas. What do you have to do to enter? Really easy. In today's show, on the video, after the show is over, go in and add a comment. And your comment should say something, preferably something good, about two of the YouTube channels or videos that, that we featured during the show. You'd go to the description and you have a look and there's a list of the channels there. Um, so say something preferably good, or you can say something bad about Grumps if you really like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why, why not? They do every day. <laughs> anyway, do that. Comment today's video. Next week, I'll pick two people out of the comments randomly, and they'll go into the final draw. And next week, we're going to do the same thing, and so on and so on, until the last week before Christmas. And the people who we picked will go into that final draw, and we'll pick at random from those um, for the final winners. So that's the competition coming up. Again, just comment in the video today after the show's over. Mention two of the videos that we featured during the show today. Speaking of videos, so this is the bit where we feature our Oz pilots for the week. Let's get into that now. Actually, before we do get into that, I'll just say, Therese and Tor, if you want to um, get in on with the rest of your day, you're welcome to disappear, and I, I don't want to keep you guys around. It was lovely having you. Thank you very much for being part of the show. Thanks for having us. Have a lovely day. Okay. It was see good, you soon. It was good seeing you again, Tor. And we see you next time. All okay. right. Okay. Okay. So let's get into today's Oz video. Oh, this is the, uh, yeah, let's see. So the first clip we've got today was um, submitted by Antoine Orban. This is Whitehaven Beach, um, shot from a DJI Mavic Pro. Um, just a little bit about the area. Whitehaven Beach is a seven kilometer stretch along Whitsundo Island. Um, it's a beautiful area, beautiful barbecue facilities and so on. The island is accessible um, by boat, seaplane or drone probably as well, um, as you can see here. It's known for its quick crystal white sands and there's a rumour that um, the Hubble Space Telescope um, was actually the glass from the Hubble Telescope was made from the sand from this beach. Unsubstantiated rumour but um, an interesting rumour nonetheless. NASA didn't comment one way or the other, so. So they didn't let you know for your own uh, benefit for your show? No, unfortunately they didn't. And from there we go to Four-Eyed Drone Guy. Here we've got um, some surf boats, um, Navy Series Round 2, it's shot in Mooloola Bar. Um, Mooloola Bar, for those who don't know, is up in Queensland. And uh, Queensland, they speak very slow up there, even the place names are slow. You've got Mooloola Bar. Marucci door and so on. They've just got so many syllables in the place names in Queensland. Um, but this is the latest in their Navy series and surf boat races held at Mooloola Bar. Cracker of a day with a light breeze, low swell and heap of sunshine. Great day for a row and certainly a very, very well shot video too. Uh, the next one is, is that Bodrone? Yep, we'll be there in a couple of moments, but beautiful, oh. beautiful footage there. 
Oh, that is gorgeous. Australia is the one place I think I really would like to come to. Of, of all the places in the world, I think that's the one place I really want to go to. Just Well, you've just got to add a few extra words to the spin-up event, and it's spin upside down. <laughs> spin upside down. <laughs> come to the other part of the globe. You've got to do it yeah. down this end. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Some beautiful boats and rowing there. I remember the, um, in my school days, all of the rowing people who did rowing as a sport and we went out from time to time to watch them. Beautiful event. Moving on from that bow drone. Um, this one starts out with your classic helicopter shot, but it's interesting to note the directional movement with both the camera and the subject that leads from one shot into the next without jarring or crossing the action line. Wow. We've got another editing. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful editing. As part of this video, of course, we've got another bone shaking corrugated dirt road that takes us off to the next location for a nice pullback over a creek in a little while. So we'll have a look at that very shortly. I'm just looking at this right now and it I don't know if it was edited that way or, but it seems to be very, there we go. So here's our corrugated road. Welcome to Australia, by the way, guys. These are our major highways <laughs> from, from one part to the other. Wow. <laughs> this looks like parts of Arizona right here. So unlike Ken Heron, do you have a pilot, Grumps? A pilot, a passport. Do I? No, I do not. Not anymore. I used to. Yeah. Uh, when I was in the military, because I flew all over, and of course I kept a passport then, but uh, yeah. I haven't had one in, I can actually say decades and mean it. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful waterfall there. Okay. And moving on, we've got a place called Cape Levesque Kuljman. Okay, I don't know how to say that properly. Kuljman. Kuljman. Um, and this was um, some great shots in this one. We'll get into a particular point where you're going to have a vertical um, pivot off a rock and the beach. Not a shot that you often see, and it goes into a nice low level pullback. But um, just out of interest, the particular location, this uh, location is a wilderness camp and it is owned by the Badi Jawi community. So that's um, so the original um, native title landowners of the area. And you can certainly go there and camp and enjoy that area. But beautiful reds, beautiful reds in that color. Wow. Yeah, there's parts of Oklahoma down, down towards the south that, are, that have that same color red, you know between here and Texas, but man, we don't have that ocean. <laughs> no, we got everything uh, here. We got a little bit of everything. Yeah, it is definitely a be beautiful country. Yeah, there are some parts of Australia where you've got an individual sheep station that's bigger than some countries. It's incredible. Yeah, as my mates keep reminding me, uh, how big your country is you know the maps it looks everybody thinks of australia as just a small island but it's huge i mean it's it's just massive yeah oh this is just gorgeous wow I'm not even paying attention to the chat. I'm sorry, guys. I'm watching this video. This is awesome. <laughs> so the last one for today is from Danosaurus Vids. Um, this is at Mount Kosciuszko. Shot at um, Australia's highest peak. Now, this is an interesting one. I didn't. I, I saw this in the list, and I, it didn't come to my mind before. But um, Kosciuszko, I, I assume this is not in the National Park. But anyway, that's another story for another day. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, some comments from Greg Hilton who puts a lot of this together. When you've got a camera in the air, it's also easy to let your concentration on flying 
take over your mind and have little attention left for the photography, particularly when putting your drone in the air if it was for a photographic purpose in the first place. So it's important to take care of all of the necessary aviation details before you take off. That way you can give yourself a chance to get the photography right. It's not good enough to take off, fly around willy-nilly and see what you can get on a memory card and hope for the best later. Look for the good shots um, to shoot when you're in the air. Observe all of the aeronautical logistics um, of getting the shots with complete safety. Practice the shot you want once or twice and then once you've got everything right, um, push the record button and get your shot down. Flying is a discipline and so is photography. It takes a lot of practice. Now, Greg Hilton, the guy who puts all of this together, he's um, a former ABC cameraman. He's worked in television for many, many years and certainly some good advice. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you have to be aware of what your shots just, they don't just, I mean, you get the rare ones that just happen, but not very often. They got to be set up properly and it takes a good eye to find that naturally. Yeah. Okay, look, I'm going to go with one more video. This is a video that was submitted by one of our viewers. I'm not going to go for the second last one. I'm actually going to go to the last one, which was the 6.4, I think it is. So this is a video that was shot in the Philippines. And um, normally we're Oz by Drone, and I try and focus on Australia where possible. But this was just some beautiful footage. And I've also got a bit of a connection to the Philippines. Um, my, my wife is Filipina and my beautiful daughter. And um, yeah, it's just nice having a look at um, that part of the country. So let's play the video. So this clip was um, created by a YouTuber with a channel name called My PI Dream, My Philippine Islands Dream. And this is his house. So he's actually had quite a large series um, focusing on the house, the house building and all of the processes around that. It's a beautiful country. It's funny, um, like in, in my work over many years, I've traveled a lot around um, different parts of Asia. And, um, you know, it's different cultures, but certainly if you go there with an open mind and um, just enjoy it, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. It's beautiful culture. I was about to say, <laughs> yeah, well, you said it yourself. I didn't say it. <laughs> so can I encourage um, people watching today? Do, um, do go check out that channel, My PI Dream. Some really good footage there, not just of about his house and the neighboring area, but um, lots of other stories as well. So we've come to the end of the top of the hour and um, Grumps, I'm going to go and uh, say goodbye in a couple of moments, but in the meantime, some messages, leave that up on the screen in the background for the moment and I'll get a couple of quick messages out, just a reminder. If you want to send a video, viewer videos, send it to upload at gregkunit.com and don't send the actual video file of course don't attach it send a link to a dropbox or a youtube video or something like that and um, that would be awesome 
and also we have our social media please do follow us and um, share our live stream out to um, some of your friends tell them you're watching in fact next week tell them i'm watching this and share it out on facebook or something like that that would be awesome if you'd like to send us anything physical our postal address is 5 slash 127 princess highway sylvania new south wales triple two four australia if you're an aussie and you've got kids and you want to send them away somewhere <laughs> drone camp that's where you can send them. Drone camp is being arranged by John Morrison and a bunch of other people, including myself. I'll put that up one more time. Dronecamp.info. So we're going to have an event and uh, we're going to teach, um, you know, school age kids how to fly drones and have fun and do it safely. And a little bit more than just picking it up and getting it out of the box and flying it. That's about all I've got for today. Is there anything else you want to share before we go? Lloyd? Uh, I, I want to give a shout out to all those that might be watching that were at uh, Spin Up. Uh, I've been real lucky. Uh, Steve Carpenter and Chris Hope were real good sending me photos of just about everything that was going on, so I felt like I was there. And uh, uh, and if you guys want to see somebody uh, have a... Well, you guys probably have already seen my video, the reaction to uh, Vegemite. Oh, I forgot to play that. I forgot to I, play that. I had it in well, the list for today. My bad. Oh, that's all right. They can they can find it on my uh, on my website, Grumpy Blogger. Uh, just look up Lloyd Minnan Hall, the Grumpy Blogger. No, 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 no. We've got to play it. So just um, let's go back to the studio. Doing things out of order a little oh. bit. Number four. And I'm getting just a tad hungry, so I'm going to uh, get me a bite to eat. Okay. Is that Vegemite toast? <laughs> <laughs> oh, some good timing there. You've got the Vegemite sitting on the shelf behind you. Yep. Hang on, hang on. Cut back to Lloyd. There we go. So yep. he's eating the Vegemite toast now. You are an honorary Australian absolute legend. Thank you. And it's actually pretty good on toast. I hate to That's say it, but way, it is. Yeah, I know. But look, for the fun of watching people's reactions and asking them to try it neat without putting it on toast, it's hilarious. Right. I know. Let's just actually, quickly play that clip now, number four. <laughs> so this was the Vegemite challenge where you had a couple of mates. Put a little bit on there so you can. This you is Brian you got, from Smoky Mountain so Aerial. Guess them on your finger. Uh, imaging. He, right. uh, they were on their way Vegemite. down to. Uh... <laughs> but he's only putting like a little dot on his finger and ch just you know it's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> and you saw Mel's idea of what he thought about it, but he tried it anyways. Well, damn. <laughs> I kind of like that. That's pretty good. <laughs> Look at him over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. That tastes like Worcestershire rotten Worcestershire. <laughs> Brian asked. Rotten is Worcestershire it? sauce, yeah, yeah. maybe not. <laughs> Yeah, he says, is it, <clears throat> is it legal to eat that stuff? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Look, it was no. great to have you um, as our fill-in co-host for today. Thank you very much for, for filling in. Um, do check out Lloyd's channel, The Grumpy Vlogger. He gets up and every day of the week. Do you ever skip a day? Uh, Saturdays and Sundays, I generally don't put anything up. I have to have a couple of days rest. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, some days I just can't help myself and I still put something up. Something pops up that I just have to gripe about. And boom, I've got a video. <laughs> yeah. Okay, lots of fun. Do check out his channel. And um, I've got one request of the afternoon. I understand there's a stream that starts at midday, 12 o'clock, which is like five minutes ago, the Everyday Dad. Um, I'd ask everyone who's um, watching now to go and channel bomb him and say Oz by Drone sent you and say hi to the guys over there and I'll jump over as well. That's all we got time for today. Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, viewers. See you next time. Bye for now. All right. Bye-bye. Good, good being here. See you, Lloyd. All right.